everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Venture Beat video offerings such as we are able to provide. I'm sitting with Shaha Rose today, and aside from having fabulous hair, <laughs> you are also going to speak your mind today, and Absolutely. she's going to name names and tell us uh, who out there in the world of venture capital is willing to invest in women because, as it turns out, not every VC is um, as open-minded as all that. But first, you are the CEO of Women 2.0, and you've had some very exciting statistics uh, to talk about today. Um, we're seeing a shift, like maybe in our larger culture, but also within women, we're turning them from wannapreneurs who would like to have their own business into entrepreneurs who do have their own business. What is helping to cause that change? Uh, I think there's a whole bunch of factors. I think one is just a change in the technology industry, right? Today we're not innovating on the sort of core level of technology. We're innovating on top of APIs. We're innovate, innovating on top of you know all sorts of platforms. So the ability to get into the tech world is so much easier. If you don't code, you can be a part of an, a startup in some way. If you don't code, you can learn to code because it's not that difficult anymore. You're using Ruby. You're using iPhone. And so that's one thing. The technology sort of landscape has changed so that entrepreneurs can it, you know, enter even if they don't have a tech background. Um, so that's one thing. I think the second thing is we've been, we ourselves have been spending a lot of time on visibility. So you know, bringing entrepreneurs that are females to the forefront through our blog, for example. Uh, and I think seeing other women starting companies is, is enough. right? When you see someone that kind of sort of looks like you, you're like, oh, I think I can do it. So I, I think of myself growing up. I mean, I was you know, fascinated by technology. And uh, every time I would go into a computer science class in college, I was always the only girl. So I took one or two courses and thought, oh, well, clearly like, this is kind of boring, so I'm just going to leave. But had someone been there, you know, a female, ideally, who sort of maybe guided me and told me what I could do with that degree, I would have stayed you know, and not done an MIS degree in business instead. So, you know, had I seen the role model early, I think it would be really important. So I myself didn't see one, so I didn't know right at the beginning. So you didn't have a parent or a mentor or anything like that who was in math or science or technology? Absolutely not, oh, yeah. Okay. My mom's a preschool teacher and mm -hmm. my dad's a businessman. <laughs> and you know, I, I talked to a lot of female engineers and a lot of them told me, yeah, I had a parent who was an engineer and it really set, set the stage really early for me to get into that. Yeah. So um, in the statistics that you guys published, is that today? Uh, no, we published it, what, two, one or two weeks ago? Okay. Yeah. I'm late. But um, <laughs> you were saying something like out of a pool of women who had expressed interest in entrepreneurship a year ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. 25% of those women were entrepreneurs and 75% just really wanted to get into it. And now it, it's gone to 50-50. Yeah. Okay. So in three years um, among this pool of women, the ability to actually execute their ideas has doubled. Absolutely. For the reasons we talked about, yep. visibility and the lower barrier to entry. Yeah, yeah, and I think just also the fact that there's there's so many resources out there now, right? Mm -hmm. There's all these different movements and ways to sort of teach entrepreneurship as well. So when you think of, you know, big fan of ours is, is Eric Ries. He, he does a lot for our community and sort of just, you know, teaches people that you can learn to do this, you know, that, that and I think that's really important. And then there's all sorts of things that even we do and other organizations do, like competitions that give you a deadline. So, you know, our competition is coming up right now, a pitch competition, and I have a reason now to put something together. You know, usually you do that when you're in like business school or, you know, in college where you do some sort of competition, but these things are happening so often that even if you have a day job, you have an opportunity to just try. And we've had so many stories from women who just were trying on the side, and then they finally jumped ship. And I think that's just so exciting. Absolutely, I love that. Um, so now we're gonna talk about the big, hairy, ugly <coughs> issue of investment and discrimination. And this is, this is tricky. I'm lucky, I'm a journalist. I, can, I, I get paid to mouth off. <laughs> so I can talk about this and not really suffer. I'm not asking anybody for money, but if a woman complains about, like she feels she's being discriminated against, it makes men not want to invest in her because mm -hmm. it, it gets tricky. And I know um, Tara Hunt has been trying to raise money for her startup Biosphere, and she's written extensively about discrimination from investors. And she mm -hmm. feels like you know a man could come up with and have men have come up with very similar ideas and have had a much easier time getting funding. And there are women who are very interested in self-preservation who will tell you up and down that that is not true, that there's no discrimination. So which way is it? Who is right here? So I have two, two points to make on that. I think okay. one is investors are there to get a return for their LPs. So it's about numbers. Are you coming to them with a compelling business idea? Are you coming to them with traction? Are you the entrepreneur 
showing that you can do it. So when you think of the current situation where we talked about doubling the number of female founders, it's great. But these are a lot of them are first time founders. So when an investor doesn't have the appetite for a first time founder, there's nothing you can do, male or female. Right? So when, 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 it, when a man walks in or a woman walks in, if the man has already started a company, let's say it was the case of T Tara when the other fellow walked in, if he had started another company, there is no question most investors will, will go that way. So that's one point. Is or that if you worked at a Google or a Facebook or something like that in the right. past, the and you know, is there. Our community is just getting there, right? The women are just getting there. So an investor needs to have that additional appetite for risk that I think is fair on their part. The second thing I think that's important is what we've done is just created a parallel universe of people that believe that you know, diverse founding teams lead to better returns. And it's proven Name in studies. Name me some names here. Name me sure. some names. Who are investors that you know sure. see women as equals? Sure. So a, a lot of the people in our community, uh, time and time again, Dave McClure. Dave McClure, good friend, but also more importantly, takes all meetings with anyone we send forward. And in his incubator, I think he published the stats, more than 20% of the current class has female founders. So that's higher than anywhere. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So you know, he he just looks for great companies, in mass, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, uh, Jeff Clavier, you know, another person who I send people over to him, and he's just like, well, I like or I don't like, but based on the company and the entrepreneur, not because of anything else. Um, the entire you know um, partnership of True has been very supportive of us, and again, they're just looking for great that's entrepreneurs. True Ventures. True Ventures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone there has been phenomenally supportive. Everyone at Blue Run Ventures. The reason I mentioned those two team, uh, those two venture capitalists, is because they actually hosted something else that I do, which is Founder Labs, which is a very, very early stage incubator focused on building teams. And in Founder Labs, half the room is female. Really? Yeah. See, getting to that 50-50 split, I mean, it's the ideal, and you can come up with a list of reasons that it's not happening now, but it's nice to hear, this is the first time I've ever heard a number where half of the people in the room are women, regardless yeah. of whether they're engineers or not. Right. Um, it's leading to building diverse teams, which, exactly. as you said, it's been proven it is good for business. So, before we wrap up, um, I have a lot of ladies in my life <laughs> who are looking for funding or will yeah. be looking for funding in the next couple months. Um, can you give us all some tips specifically for women who are going to be approaching VCs, some of them for the first time? One would be to sort of put yourself in the shoes of the investor. What are they looking for? I know you have the best idea on earth and you want to talk about it and you want to show me a demo and all this kind of fun stuff. But the reality is they want numbers, right? They want numbers, they want to know what's your competitive advantage. You know, you as a woman, you as your founding team, you as whatever, what do you bring to the table that's different? So know that, you know, know your numbers, know how you're different. Um, and I think just sort of practice. And practice with friends, and practice with mentors, and practice with anyone who will listen. Because the reality is you learn about, you know, what your own pitch is by just saying it. And I think women are in their heads too much sometimes. I know I am. I think anyone is in their head too much <laughs> sometimes. So it's just a question of practicing. And I think there's, there's safe places to do it and there's unsafe places to do it, but just put yourself out there. Um, and leverage networks. So um, if you don't have connections, you will get them. The valley is small and you can make them. So don't ever feel discouraged by that. I think use every opportunity to get to know someone in an authentic way and, and leverage the connection in the future. Okay, words of wisdom. Stay strong, stay smart, <laughs> lady entrepreneurs, and we wish you the very best of luck, and stay tuned for more soon. Thank you, Charos, for coming in. Thanks for having me.